Today we're going to talk briefly about one of our favorite topics in the PICU, oxygen delivery. Before we get started, let's look briefly at the differences between hypoxemia and hypoxia, as these two terms are not synonymous. Hypoxemia refers to a low PaO2. This can be directly measured on an arterial blood gas. Hypoxemia is a low arterial oxygen tension or a low partial pressure of oxygen in the blood. This will be important later. Hypoxia refers to inadequate tissue oxygenation. Basically, there's not enough oxygen at a tissue level for cellular metabolism to take place. There's no direct measure of hypoxia, so we rely on surrogate markers like lactic levels or end organ labs. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Oxygen delivery is dependent on lots of different factors, so we'll start big picture and work our way down. In the biggest sense, oxygen delivery depends on your arterial oxygen content, which has to do with your lung and gas exchange, and your cardiac index or cardiac output, which of course has to do with your heart function. So first, let's start with the lung component of the equation, or arterial oxygen content. This has two primary components. First, the amount of oxygen bound by hemoglobin. Second, the amount of oxygen dissolved in blood. Let's look at these two a bit further. When looking at the amount of oxygen bound to hemoglobin, there are three primary factors we need to consider. First, how much hemoglobin do we even have? This makes a lot of sense because we know that hemoglobin molecules are the boxcars of oxygen, responsible for transporting and unloading oxygen to target tissues. 1.34 is the second factor. This is a constant and refers to the amount of oxygen carried by 1 gram per deciliter of hemoglobin when fully saturated or bound by oxygen. The third factor is important because we know that not all hemoglobin is bound by oxygen. So your SAO2 refers to the percent of hemoglobin bound by oxygen in the arterial blood. This is, by the way, something we measure indirectly with an SpO2 or a oxygen saturation. The second portion of the equation refers to the amount of oxygen dissolved in plasma. Here we have two factors to consider. First, and importantly, our PaO2, which we already know refers to the partial pressure of oxygen, or the pressure exerted by uncombined oxygen molecules dissolved in plasma. 0.003 is another constant. This represents the amount of oxygen dissolved in plasma. These two are related such that for a 1 mm mercury change in PaO2, 0 0.003 milliliters of oxygen is dissolved into the blood. As you can tell by looking at these numbers, the second portion of the equation, or the dissolved portion, tends to be less important. This becomes important only if you're talking about patients that are at varying altitudes or in hyperbaric oxygen chambers such that there are very large changes in their PaO2. So now that we've gone through the lung portion of the equation, let's briefly go through the cardiac portion. This is a little more straightforward, as what we're really looking at with a cardiac index is our cardiac output, which is made up of our heart rate and our stroke volume. We have to go a little further into stroke volume, and we know that it's made up of three separate factors. First, our preload. Second, our afterload. And third, our contractility. The cardiac portion of the equation is immensely important. It makes sense for most people to think about gas exchange when you're talking about oxygen delivery, but it doesn't really matter how much oxygen is in your blood if you can't actually pump it to your organs. This is the reason why it's important to remember the difference between hypoxemia and hypoxia, and also the reason why you can have hypoxemia without tissue hypoxia and tissue hypoxia without hypoxemia.
So let's put it all together. Oxygen delivery is equal to the amount of oxygen bound by hemoglobin plus the amount of oxygen dissolved in plasma times our cardiac output, or heart rate times stroke volume. So now that we know all the different components of oxygen delivery, why do we care? We care because the equation itself gives us several things to manipulate to improve patient oxygenation. First, hemoglobin. Giving blood transfusions is one of the best ways to improve arterial oxygen content and thus oxygen delivery. You can also manipulate or at least optimize your patient's saturations and your PaO2. Though again, we're talking about pretty advanced technologies like hyperbaric oxygen chambers to make much of a difference in our PaO2. We can also manipulate factors related to our cardiac output, like giving volume or blood products to enhance our preload, giving medications to possibly reduce our afterload, or addressing contractility with medications that have inotropic actions, like pressors. So that brings us to the end of our brief review of oxygen delivery. Thanks for sticking with me.